Let's have a look at an example from section 2.1. Uh, this is exercise 22. And it says, determine whether the statement forms P and Q or R and P and Q or P and R are logically equivalent. Construct a truth table and include a sentence justifying your answer. Your answer should show that you understand the meaning of logical equivalence. Okay. So we're going to look at a truth table for the first statement form and a truth table for the second statement form. And what we want to see is that the truth values match up. If they do, these are logically equivalent statements, statement forms. Um, if they do not, then we don't have logically equivalent statement forms. So here's a truth table for the first one. And I want to say a couple things about this, um, about the process. I addressed this in the previous video about section 2.1, but in that video, we didn't look at any examples that had three variables. Um, this one does have three variables, P, Q, and R. And because of that, we need eight rows. Okay, it's always going to be two raised to the power of the number of variables. So if you've got one variable, you only need two rows. If you've got two variables, you need four rows. If you've got three variables, you need eight rows. And that's generally as many as we'll have. But if you did have four variables, you'd have 16 rows. Um, in the previous video, I talked about a way of, of organizing this in a systematic way. And um, the process that I described is you take the last variable, in this case r, and alternate it true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Then you take the second to last variable and you alternate that in a different way, two trues followed by two falses, etc. And then for the first variable, you do four trues followed by four falses. And that ensures that you have every possible combination of true, false for each of the variables um, and you don't repeat any. And that's what we really want to make sure is that we get all of them, we don't repeat any. Um, the other thing that we want to make sure is that we have them in a consistent order every time we do a truth table. Because just like we're seeing in this example, sometimes we want to compare truth tables. And if we, if we are not consistent about this, it makes the comparison a lot more difficult. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so we've got our eight rows. And as I also mentioned in the previous video, you don't want to just jump to the final statement form. Uh, generally speaking, because that's going to make things more difficult for you. It's also going to make it more likely that you'll make mistakes if you try to do that. Um, that's why it's a good idea to include intermediate um, columns so that you're doing this step by step and you're kind of dealing with one logical connective at a time. Okay, so I've got the Q or R column, and then I just look at Q and I look at R and I think of how OR works, and then we get this true, 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 false, true, 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 false. Then we're ready to move to the final column, which is P and Q or R. And since we have a Q or R column, we can just look at the P column as well as the Q or R column and then think about how AND works. And remember, AND is only going to be true if both, in this case, both P and Q or R are true. And so that's the first three rows where that's the case. The other five rows, um, we get false. Okay, we're going to want to compare this to the truth table for the other statement form. 
So remember here we get three trues followed by five falses. Okay, here's the other one. Now this time I've got two intermediate columns, one for P and Q, one for P and R, and the final statement form we're looking for is P and Q or P and R. Okay, so we think about again how and works, how or works, and when everything is said and done, again we get true, 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 followed by five falses. And let me reiterate that it was important that we had the rows set up the same way, because that is what makes the comparison easier. Um, if we had them in different orders, then that just makes it that much harder to compare the right rows to each other. Okay, so we're seeing the same truth values in each statement form. So that brings us to our conclusion here that the truth tables show that the truth values for the statement forms are always the same. Therefore, these statements are logically equivalent and to use the notation that I introduced in the previous video, we can write each statement form with a, an equivalent symbol, which is the, this sort of almost like an equal sign with three bars. Um, that's the notation for logical equivalence. I hope you found this video helpful uh, as you go through the, the homework for this section. Um, see you in the next video.